In a previous video, I shared with you how to get rid of your non-words, how to get rid of the filler words. And the way I taught you to do this was by recording yourself speaking for five to 10 minutes nonstop about your day. And then after that, getting it transcribed. And then once you get it transcribed, you check the option of making sure they leave in the filler words and the non-words. And as a result of this, you'll start to be able to highlight all your non-words and your filler words. This is gonna make you self-aware as to what non-words and filler words do you use that distract people from your message. Now, when it comes to body language, the same kind of distractions exist, not in auditory form, but in a physical form. So think of these as the body language versions of ums and ahs. And in that same flow of logic, just like how ums and ahs, auditory wise, distract people from the message, when you have a lot of body language ticks, or when you've got your ums and ahs with your body, they also distract people from the message and it actually decreases the clarity of your message as well. The way to actually become more aware of what your visual tics are is the same process as how you work out what your non-words and your filler words are. So you have to record yourself again for five to 10 minutes, but you wanna leave it for a day because when we watch it straight away, we're not as aware. By leaving it for a day, we heighten our awareness and that's gonna allow us to then start to see what are, what are we doing with our hands that it's actually distracting people? What are we doing with our body that's actually distracting people? What's the visual clutter? I've been running workshops for many years now and I wanna share with you to give you some help. These are the top 10 common ticks or visual clutter that people tend to use that distracts from their message. Let me show you. So tell me, as you look at this frame, what am I actually doing that is kind of distracting you? Have a look at this for a second. See if you notice it. Do you notice it? So this is what's known as a toe lift. You see, these little things, while they're minute and they're tiny little changes to your body language, it makes a big difference to the clarity of the message. A lot of people, when they're nervous, they do the second one, where they lift their heels. And a lot of people tend to do this behind the lectern because A, the lecterns are too high, and then they're trying to be higher than the lectern. They don't realize they're doing this. Not only does this distract people from the message, this is gonna give you really sore calves. So don't do this. Do you notice what this one is already? Have a clear look at this. This is gonna help you with awareness as to what's the body language to look for in your videos. This is the shoulder shrug. Tension happens here in our shoulders often and it impacts your voice because your whole body is a part of one instrument. And when we get nervous, our shoulders tend to rise and it may not be as dramatic as this, but sometimes it just slightly rise, a slightly raised shoulder is gonna impact your clarity in your message as well. And again, it becomes physically draining, just slightly having my shoulders hunched up. Can you see what this one is? It's pretty obvious, right? This is another sign of nervousness, and this makes you appear less confident. And also, again, this is gonna give you a sore calf, but also at the same time, what this does is, it makes you look like a rabbit. Look out for this one as well. This one is the finger tapping. And some people don't just tap themselves. Sometimes they're tapping the lectern and they keep tapping this and without realizing that sometimes the tapping is coming through the microphone because the microphone is normally attached to the lectern and it picks up on this. So be careful with the finger tapping. Look out for this one too. This is a classic one for men. Men tend to always put their hands in their pockets because again, we don't know what to do with them. But because you've now learned the foundations to hand gestures, you've got so many different hand gestures you can use. And what tends to happen when we put our hands in our pockets is when we try to gesture, the only thing we can really move is our elbows. And now we turn into a bit of a clucking chicken. So be careful of the hands in pockets. And I, need, I see some men who, who take one hand out and gesture with one hand like this and they keep the other hand in the pocket. So again, look out for that as well, different variations of this. I've even seen variations where they take the hand out but then they put the thumb in. And then the thumb is in the pocket and then they're gesturing like this. So be careful of this. And I know I've spoken about this in the hand gesture section but it's definitely worth bringing back as well. Ladies, some men as well, this tends to be a stance that they default to. They kind of put their hands on their hips. And again, if you gesture like this, you're either gesturing with your elbows or you're gesturing with your hips. So you wanna avoid this position. You wanna to default to the foundational hand gestures. Use them, they're incredibly powerful. This is another one of those classic ones where it makes you come across nervous. And if you look at what I'm doing, I'm rubbing my hands together and I'm keeping them in a prayer position. And this kind of prayer position does distract people because it just seems a bit unnatural if you keep it going on for too long. Again, you can sound confident, but if you look like this, it will make you look like you're very nervous and it takes away from the authority that you have and it takes away your confidence too. 
I feel like in the world we live in today, we're very aware of this hand gesture. We're very aware of this type of body language and we are very aware it's negative. So don't cross your arms, don't do this. A way better version of this is the thinker or the computer. This is way better. This shows you're engaged, it shows you're listening, it shows you're open. Whereas this shows, I don't really wanna be here, I kind of, I, I'm gonna leave. This is how some people come out on stage. Again, because they're nervous when they come out, they have their hands behind their back and they're kind of, you know, they're walking out and it's like, oh, again, I'm nervous. I don't really want to be here. This is bad body language. This shows you're hiding something. It's either showing that you're hiding something behind your back or it shows you again, the audience signs that you're really, really nervous. These are all very distracting. So you want to move to using the foundational hand gestures so that it gives you more authority and it gives you more engagement and it gives you more power. I will throw one more bonus one in. And I've seen a lot of very powerful executives do this. And it's the good old classic, it's this. And then when they're talking and they get really animated, they start to do this. Now be very careful of this hand gesture because think about this, for those of you who grew up in the 80s and the 90s, who does this make you think of when you think of a cartoon character who says, Excellent. Excellent. It's Mr. Burns. It gives across this kind of schemey kind of body language, like you're scheming something, like a little bit evil. So you want to avoid this too. And that's it. Those are the top 11 visual tics that I find my students tend to have over the last couple of years. So make sure you get rid of them if you notice some of those you tend to have as well. And this is going to help you increase the clarity of your message as you decrease the visual clutter.